There is a reason respect for human rights is one of the three pillars of the United Nations. Canada will never forget this experience and this lesson. We shall continue to press for an end to arbitrary detention wherever and however it occurs. Chapter 4. Well, the Liberals have changed tact. Uh, sounds like he's going hard line and uh, speaking tough words against China now that the Michaels are back. Do you agree um, with this change in policy, it seems like? Comments below. President, Check out this. China has taken a flaw in response to the statement delivered by the Foreign Minister of Canada this afternoon at the, at the General Assembly Hall. The Canadian Foreign Minister, in his intervention, mentioned Ms. Meng Wanzhou, who is a Chinese citizen. He also mentioned two Canadian citizens, i.e. Michael Kovic and Michael Spavo. What was said by Canada is in total ignorance of the law and completely wrong. And China categorically rejects and opposes what was said by Canada. With regard to Madam Meng's case, Thanks to the unremitting effort by the Chinese government, Madam Meng Wanzhou, who spent over 1,000 days of arbitrary detention, 1,028 days of arbitrary detention, returns to China on a charter flight on the 24th of September. She returned to her homeland from Canada and she had a reunion with her family. The Meng's case is a complete political uh, inc uh, incident on the frame-up. The United States and, and Canada made the case of Meng not out of any legal reasons. The true purpose was to suppress the Chinese high-tech enterprises and companies as a way to hold back Chinese advancement in terms of science and technology. The US and Canada's action is very typical of arbitrary detention. With regard to the two Michaels, Michael Kovic and uh, Michael Kovic, there are a lot of evidence that show that these two, while they were in China, were, in, were engaged in acts that endanger the Chinese security within the, within the territory of China. And they confessed to their crimes. I must emphasize here that the Meng's case is completely different in essence with the cases concerning, pertaining to the two Michaels. We hope that Canada can face up to the facts squarely, correct their mistakes, and draw lessons from what happened so that they will not make further mistakes. I thank you, Mr. President. So China fires back. I believe that this is, a, you know, been the past, and moving forward, it looks like it will most likely be a tighter relationship under the Biden administration and Trudeau. Please allow me to make regime. a personal observation. As I address you, I am conscious that I am speaking to virtually the entire world. In my previous career, I was an astronaut, and I had the opportunity to see the entire world from the vantage point of space. I have flown over all of your countries, and I have reflected a great deal on our planet Earth. I have realized that Earth is the cradle of all humanity and that we all come from the same place and that we have, frankly, nowhere else to go. And that we must find a way to get along with each other. And that we must take care of our planet, a planet that we are visibly damaging. Space offers the unique perspective of seeing beyond one's own national borders. In that sense, this body, the United Nations, offers that same perspective. 
I am honored to be with you here today on behalf of Canada's newly re-elected government led by Prime Minister Well, is Justin this going to be the last we hear of it? Or um, will this carry on? Leave your comments below and this carries on the subcommittee. And international law in response to the request for extradition. Madam Meng Guangzhou was treated with respect. The process in the Canadian judicial system was one of independence and transparency. We respect our court system. We respect judicial independence. And at the conclusion of that process, she spoke outside the Vancouver courthouse to thank the court and to thank the Canadian government for, I quote, upholding the rule of law. She also expressed her gratitude to the Canadian people for their tolerance and apologized for any inconvenience. Two Canadian citizens who were held in China arbitrarily did not benefit from a similar degree of transparency, respect, due process, or judicial independence. We continue to oppose the way these Canadian citizens were treated, and we will continue to speak out against arbitrary detention in state-to-state -state yeah, relations. On social media and through the internet has made us realize that the digital revolution comes with risks and dangers that we cannot ignore. Canada will continue to stand up and stand firm against the forces of lying and fear, of oppression and hate, of criminality and corruption. For this is fundamentally who we are as Canadians. Our commitments to human rights and the rule of law extends well beyond our shores. Canada will continue its work to promote respect for the rights of people everywhere. For example, we will continue to press for democracy and the rule of law in Myanmar, where the overthrow of the elected government by the Tatmada has caused much hardship and suffering to the Myanmari people, and we support all efforts to end the military dictatorship and assure the rights of all peoples of Myanmar, including the Rohingya, whose lives are threatened by a genocidal regime. Canada will continue to lead efforts to maintain judicial independence, media freedom, and the rule of law. We must all continue to fight against impunity. I stand before you to say that this is not something we simply talk about. It is something that we do. Two days ago, we welcomed back to Canada Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor, who were imprisoned by the Chinese government after Canada applied both Canadian and international law in response to a request for extradition of a Chinese citizen. Canada observed the rule of law, and two Canadian citizens paid a heavy price for this commitment. We did so as a matter of principle, and we are proud of the courage of our two citizens, the good faith and resilience of their families, and the determination and creativity of our diplomats. We continue to oppose the way these two citizens were treated. And on that, I want to recognize the support of our many international partners in standing with these Canadian citizens, as, though, as well as those who helped in developing and signing the Declaration on Arbitrary Detention in State-to-State -State Relations. Our solidarity in defense of human rights and international law is an important signal. We must continue to stand together united in our shared determination to defend our values and principles. Counterpoint. Well, all's well that ends well. All of them end up back. Hopefully the Michaels get a little bit of cash for their worries. It would be nice. And uh, Meng is happy. And she actually thanked Canada. So hopefully it's all good. Comments below. Good day.